Gymnasticon was an early exercise machine resembling a stationary bicycle, invented in 1796 by Francis Lowndes. Its function was to exercise the joints, either in all parts of the body at once, or partially. The Gymnasticon emerged from the newly developed science of orthopedics, originated by Nicholas Andre in 1741. It was an early example of a series of new technologies in gymnastics that would lead to the development of physical therapy in the 19th century. Lowndes, the device's inventor, had previously established himself as an authority on medical electricity, the use of electricity as a therapy for both disease and injury. His book Observations on Medical Electricity, published in 1787, contained descriptions of a number of cases in which electricity has either cured the disease or given great relief. Dr. Jonas Gustav Wilhelm Zander, was a Swedish physician, orthopedist and one of the originators of mechanotherapy. He is known for inventing a therapeutic method of exercise carried out by means of a special apparatus. He began his work in 1860s. He established the Zander Therapeutical Institute in Stockholm. Zander exhibited his institute at the 1876 Centennial Exhibition in Philadelphia where his exercise machines won a gold medal. One, by 1906 he had established institutes in 146 countries. And by 1910, ample numbers of Americans were familiar with the machines, they were established at health spas, and some were privately owned though expensive.
The pictures reveal the state-of-the-art gyms and exercise equipment installed on some of the world's most famous early 20th century cruise liners including the Titanic. The passengers had the option to keep fit while on board some of the world's most prestigious passenger liners including the SS Bermuda Star, RMS Homeric 1922, RMS Franconia 1922. Victoria Motorship and the stricken RMS Titanic. The Titanic in particular boasted a first-class gymnasium. In the 1970s Arthur Jones invented machines known as Nautilus to aid with high-intensity training, which was first sold in 1970. Jones was a pioneer in the field of physical exercise i.e. weight and strength training. Nautilus workout machines proved to be very similar to Gustav Zander's exercising machines which were widespread in America in the early 20th century. But Jones insists that he made these discoveries without any knowledge of Xander's discoveries, so, in attempts to improve my exercise results, I designed and built a total of about 20 very sophisticated exercise machines, then believing that these were the first exercise machines ever built by anybody. But many years later, I learned that a doctor named Gustav Zander had designed and built a number of exercise machines in Europe nearly a hundred years before I built my first one. I did not copy Zander's work and learned nothing from him, was not even aware of his work until long after I had made the same discoveries that he had made. But if I had known about, and understood, Xander's work, it would have saved me a lot of time and a rather large fortune in money, because the man was a genius, his only problem was that he lived about a century ahead of his time. At a time when very few people cared about exercise and even fewer knew anything about it. While many of the machines seen here are absolutely ridiculous looking, not all of them are obsolete. In fact, some of them have been reinvented in different ways, and can be seen on late-night television infomercials.
How do you imagine the gym of the future? The gyms will continue adopting technology at a rapid pace and we will see it in every facet of the gym. Every piece of equipment at the gym will be connected through sensors that communicate with apps on the guest's phone. Those sensors will also relay information to the gym owners, giving them a tremendous amount of data on how people use the gym. We will also see a rise in smart clothing, where sensors are embedded directly into the fabric of shorts, shoes, shirts, etc.